The search for the most immersive interactive gameplay experience is over, but the fight for survival has only just begun. In case you missed a few key details, here are all the clues you need to puzzle out the ending to Escape Room. The premise of Escape Room revolves around a group of strangers who receive invites to a competitive escape game, purportedly the most immersive experience of its kind. The game is being put on by a company called Minos Escape Rooms, a name that suggests this company means business. The name Minos refers to the mythical first king of Crete, who presided over a labyrinth to which young people would be brought for his entertainment. Maze-like and practically unescapable, the participants would typically die inside the labyrinth, killed by a monstrous minotaur. While the movie escape room isn't particularly maze-like, the idea of people being lured there to die for others' entertainment proves especially relevant by the time the ending rolls around, and the true nature of the company is revealed. Talk about immersive. What's wrong with you? That was real! After the escape game reveals its deadly nature, the surviving players start to uncover what its true purpose is. Mike, Ben, Zoe, and Jason enter a room that's mocked up to resemble a hospital. Several hospitals, actually, with each player finding something familiar. They realize the setup is meant to remind them of past traumatic experiences in which they emerged as alone survivors. Zoe survived a plane crash, Jason survived a boating accident, Mike survived a mining accident, and Ben survived a fatal drunk driving collision. As Zoe describes it, they are all statistical anomalies. This aspect of the game is more than just psychological. As the Game Master reveals in the final chamber, the contest was set up specifically to pit lone survivors against each other for the sake of seeing what would happen when these lucky few compete. Upon discovering the game's true nature, something inside Zoe snaps. While all of the other players set about attempting to solve a puzzle, Zoe goes berserk and starts smashing every camera in the room. She guesses that the people in charge of the game aren't just observing their play, but actively involving themselves in it, something that would be impossible if she takes away their ability to watch. They're watching us! They know every move that we're making! As poisonous gas fills the room, the other players flee, leaving Zoe behind as she insists on finishing the job. She survives the gas by breathing through an oxygen mask, knowing that no one can see she's still alive. While the Mino staff comes to clear out the chamber, they assume she's dead until she attacks. Danny, the avid gamer who met his end by drowning in the cold room, previously insisted that brute force shouldn't be necessary to win the game, but in this instance, it might be the only way. While Zoe practices a game-breaking gambit, Ben presses forward to the final room, where he meets a man who describes himself as the Game Master. Ben is declared the winner while the GM monologues like a supervillain, spilling all the details of Minos' motivations. He reveals the games are entertainment for wealthy audiences like gladiator fights, with Ben's group being the latest iteration of a long line of twisted games. The contest, he reveals, is for the benefit of no one but the viewers. The players aren't allowed to win. The Game Master then attempts to strangle Ben to death before Zoe reappears and intervenes. Together, they kill the Game Master and finally make their escape. After Ben and Zoe leave, 24 hours pass, with Ben being checked into a hospital for his injuries. When Zoe is informed that Ben is stable, she's called away by police to assist in their investigation. Their findings are not encouraging. Back at the Minos building, the company is nowhere to be found. The facility has been cleared out. In a final insult, Zoe is taunted by a message on the wall familiar only to her that reads Wu-Tang Yu, a mysterious name that previously appeared in several rooms of the game. She realizes that the non Johnson's name is actually an anagram that solves to No Way Out. Six months later, Ben and Zoe catch up with each other in Chicago. While life is going well for Ben, Zoe is still seeking closure. The bodies of their fellow players, she discovers, were scattered around the world, with their deaths made to look like accidents. The scheme sits poorly with Zoe's sense of justice. The world deserves to know what really happened. Zoe manages to convince Ben to fly to Minos' Manhattan headquarters, the coordinates of which she discovered hidden in the company's logo. They book a flight to the city, but it turns out Minos has been watching, and is already already one step ahead. In an epilogue, it's revealed that the people behind Minos have designed a custom-made escape game just for the two of them, which they plan to install on their flight. They will apparently have only a 4% chance of surviving this game, which seems to be targeting them out of pure spite. On a monitor, a shadowy silhouette figure overseeing the operation says it's time to play again. Jigsaw would be proud. Escape Room ends with a clear tease for a sequel, one that could demonstrate the truly awesome reach of Minos. It's the only time that viewers get a real glimpse behind the curtain and the operation looks massive. 
dozens of people are involved with the design of the plane escape game alone. Which makes you wonder just how deep the rabbit hole goes. Who is the shadowy figure overseeing the game? And what is the motivation behind the conspiracy? Is it really just for entertainment, or could it be something more? Whatever may come next, the track has been laid for some truly off-the-rails insanity. If a sequel gets the green light, you can count us in the game. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.